In this episode of The Excursion, I'll be fishing, cooking, golfing, and even chocolateering through the rivers, marshes, and historic streets of McIntosh County, Georgia. And if I succeed, I'll enjoy a party on the waterfront in historic downtown Darien. But if I fail, it's the crew that gets to enjoy this local hotspot. Let's get started. We return to McIntosh County, and for good reason. Darien is the state of Georgia's second oldest city, designed by Georgia's founder, General James Oglethorpe, then built up and defended by the Scottish Highlanders. So the Highland Scots were some of the best military people in the world, which is why Oglethorpe encouraged a group of about 200 Highlanders to come to Georgia, and they proved their value because of the military activities that followed and eventually winning the War of Jenkins' Ear against the Spanish. Darien has had a history of highs and lows. The town became the export center for a great deal of open-grown cotton. So Darien commercially grew, and in the first three decades of the, of the 1800s, Darien was a seaport that rivaled Savannah. But then the lows came, the railroads came, and the railroads all went into Savannah. So Darien went into an economic low which was made even worse by the Civil War when the town was burned to the ground by Union troops. And so Darien was like completely in ashes in 1865 when the war ended. This rich Scottish heritage is celebrated today for adults and children to learn and appreciate. Events like the Scottish Heritage Festival at Fort King George gives visitors an enlightening taste of what Darien's early days may have been like. As we explored modern-day McIntosh County in our first episode, we learned of its thriving crabbing industry and made a few fine catches of our own with local crabber Brian Vickers. We then explored the history and architectural wonders of the Reynolds Mansion on nearby Sapelo Island and even rolled down to its bowling alley for a few strikes. In our return to McIntosh County, the adventures continue. Let's begin on the water at Blue and Hall Marina with my hometown friend, Darien's own, David Stevens. It's just this is an incredible place just to live, work, and play. These marshes are like none other. I think we have the most marsh in inland waterways in the state of Georgia. They're just so pristine and undisturbed. This is what we look at every day. We're going on an inshore trip today. What do you catch out here? We're going to be targeting trout, reds, and we are going to try to find a flounder. And, and I'm sure we'll catch a, a wide array of different species. Wes and I have talked about challenges. And, uh, you know, you have your maybe catch five trout, five reds. I'm happy with one fish a day, right? Yeah. But there's also something known as the inshore slam. Let's talk about different challenges out there today. All right, yeah, the, fly, the five trout and the five reds will probably be pretty easy to do today. Flounder might be a little bit of stretch this time of year. There's still some flounder around. The five reds, five trout would probably be the easiest. Oh, that went under. The skunk is gone, folks. That's Mr. Silver Perch, better known as the Yellowtail. All right. Also known as trash. Trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do we got? Hey, that looks like a trout. Really nice trout. Yes, sir. All right. We got about a 14-inch speckled trout. One of what, obviously, what we're chasing today. I know that that's keeper size, right? Yeah, he makes it. All right. Looking good. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> trout time, folks. Got ourselves a keeper size. Yep. Got the yellow in there, got that tooth, the snaggle tooth. That hook right in the corner, good job. Thank you, that's where I was trying to hook them. You saw where you can So there are just dozens of those guys running around. There they are, they're in there. That fish is 12. 12? Yeah, 11 and a half, 12 inches. All right. There we go. Still some trout out there, Dave. <laughs> we <got> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. When did this happen? Well, we're getting good numbers here. Just cruising the healthy and uncrowded back rivers and marshes were enough to keep me content. But catching a few trout as a starter and knowing more dandies were in store really had me fired up. That's what we came after right there. 
We're a little over halfway home on the challenge. We're at our red spot now. Is that him? Uh, That's a fish. Oh yeah, uh, you might not get him back. Manny, a big drum, a black, a black drum, black yeah. Drum. All right. All right, we're looking for your cousin, but I'm not complaining. Oh uh, yeah. Look at that, sheephead. Good job. There you go, we got a good spot, getting variety, all kinds of fish floating around in there. That's him. You should have him. Yeah, I got him now. That's gonna be Mr. Red. I just saw him run across there, didn't I? Yeah, yeah there he yeah, is, there nice is. fish. That's what we've been going for right there. Beautiful red drum. That's him. <laughs> yeah. Is that gonna be number two? Number two. Healthy water here in the marshes of McIntosh. You still need three and a flounder. <laughs> well, we're, we're working on it. It's another one. So that blue on the tail. It's got a spot. They've all been one spotters on the tail. That fish is 17, 18 inches right there. They're getting big now, folks. 19 incher. You always see those spots there. Oh! I almost dropped the pole on that. Oh yeah, we woke him up. Good, nice fish, yeah. really nice fish. This is what I like for number five. Number five is alive. Yeah. Woo! That's another good one. Six trout, five redfish, sheep's head, black drum, and a silver perch or two. Good for you. Yes, thank you, Captain David. Get in here, buddy. Yes, sir. Does it Red count if West catches the flounder? Of course it does, right, Wes? We're a team. We've always been a team. There's never been any competition between us. There you go. Snatch. Snatch. You got him? There you go. Good job. All right, Wes. All right. There we go. Tell me it's not the biggest one. Oh, and he's got multiple spots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, he got more than one. <laughs> what do you think about that? By the time we were to your, what, sixth, seventh fish, mm -hmm. we wound up 18, 19 inch fish. Yeah. And, uh, and got you finished off and was able to let Wes get in on the action. Uh, you started bragging about the spots? It's crazy because, you know, you, I've never seen one that didn't have one on each side, you know, two spots. Yeah. But we have, we've photographed fish that had 130 plus spots. Wow. And, uh, and Wes has only had four. Yeah. <laughs> four spots, Dave. Yeah. How did you get? Well, if you combine them all, that's like eight. Kevin, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoyed it. My pleasure. Oh, that was awesome. Yeah. I'm going to be looking for you again. Okay. I'm starting to come to this area a lot. Sounds I good. Like Introducing 12 golden opportunities to make your home in one of the most beautiful places in coastal Georgia. Oaks on the River is a waterfront community of 12 luxury three-bedroom condominiums in Darien, Georgia, only minutes from St. Simons and Jekyll Island. Each comes with an optional deep water boat slip to enjoy the various amenities on the beautiful Otamaha River. Stake your claim. Visit oaksontheriver.com. From produce to people, the best things are grown and raised in Georgia. Even in tough times, we come together, work hard, and grow strong. When you purchase Georgia-grown products, you support farmers, families, and this proud state we call home. Together, we will keep Georgia growing.
So keeping in our theme of the sea and the tranquility of this region, we now head to our excursion home base in the scene for our first excursion reward. Welcome to the Darien Waterfront Inn. Five beautiful spacious rooms, each with their own bathroom and room with a view. You can sit on the cozy back porch overlooking the Darien River Bluff or hunker down inside and let the inn's wonderful hosts Dave and Joanne share tales of the region's wonders. And lucky for me, I caught Joanne right when she was preparing her soon-to-be-famous Shrimp and Grits Spectacular. This is a southern classic here. Tell me about it. Yep, shrimp and grits. I've actually been, I moved from Massachusetts 10 years ago, but I've been making shrimp and grits in Massachusetts for about 15 years. You were meant to be here. And this looks a little different. There's something different here. It is, yep. Um, what I use, I use um, chorizo. It's a Portuguese sausage. It's something I'm familiar with from my Portuguese heritage. And it's just a little softer flavor for me as opposed to the andouille sausage, which most people make theirs with. So we're just going to take this out and we're going to use the juice and make a little gravy, they call it. Oh, yeah. I like this recipe of um, a grit cake. You kind of make your grits a little thicker, add some Parmesan and some cheddar cheese to them. Okay, the gravy. This lovely gravy right on top of our grit cake. There we go, Wes. Yeah. Get as much shrimp as we can on top. Some of those lovely pieces of sausage. Oh, that sausage is fantastic. I don't know if you noticed, yeah. but I had a couple. <laughs> a resistance. Then we're done. That is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing I see two plates here. Wes, I usually don't do this, but would you like to join me for this? Yeah. All right. How oh, very nice. Hey. And unexpected of you. Yeah, well, this is how we do it here at the Darien Waterfront Inn. There you go, Wes. Cheers. Cheers. So after any great waterfront meal, the only thing we could imagine was dessert. So why not treat ourselves to one of the best treats in the world? Located in the heart of downtown Darien in historic Vernon Square, You'll find my new friend Dale Potts in the imaginative chocolates of the Sugar Marsh Cottage. I decided I wanted to start a gourmet chocolate confection business. Darien was the inspiration for the company. This house was built in 1935. It's directly across from the Open Gates Bed and Breakfast, which is actually was a Timber Baron's residence. I have had my eye on this house for 26 years. I knew that Sugar Marsh Cottage needed to land here. This property was available and it became our production facility. When we return, Dale takes me into the chocolate kitchen where I begin my training as a genuine chocolatier. Nestled along the back rivers and marshes of Darien, Georgia, the McIntosh Rod and Gun Club. Imagine the simple pleasure in finding a perfect sun-washed seashell unveiled by a gently ebbing tide among sugar-white marsh grass. It is this natural beauty and sweet essence of the Georgia coast and its barrier islands that inspires our signature gourmet shortbread and whimsical seashell-shaped confections.
from fishing and catching in the golden marshes of McIntosh County to a relaxing shrimp and grit spectacular at the Darien Waterfront Inn, we continue our chocolatier adventures with Dale Potts of the Sugar Marsh Cottage, and it doesn't get much sweeter than this. This has been heated. We're going to put about two-thirds of it on this granite block. As you work it, you'll feel how the temperature is coming down because it will become thicker. What I thought we would do is now make some bonbon shells. All right, let's do some bonbon okay. shells. Okay. I can't explain enough the smell in this place. It's so good. From being out fishing to this, my goodness, this is great. You basically flood the mold okay. and make sure that all the cavities are full with chocolate. You flip it over. So you're getting the, so it's, it's like a, a shell. Exactly. <laughs> the shell is a shell. <laughs> the okay. shell that is a shell. Sense. Yours was much prettier. Yes, yeah, scrape off the excess. Flipping, don't fall in. Oh, that's kind of cool. Hello. I'm gonna show you how to decorate a mold with cocoa butter and just kind of have fun. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> There you go. Woo. <laughs> it is almost noon. We got our Richland rum. This particular rum, however, is their cask strength, which has not been diluted at all. So I believe it is 115 proof, but it's got excellent flavor. Okay. And we thought it would really hold up nicely to a dark chocolate ganache. Nice. Pipe it into the mold. Okay, is there a technique that I squeeze? squeeze. Oh, kind of like milk in a cow. There you go. Which I do all the time. And that's, that's perfect. Yes. See how you can tell how they've released? Oh, yeah, yeah. They've you want off. them really all to release. So it just shrunk. Exactly. Flip completely over. Oops. And Almost there. lost the first one. <laughs> and just twist. One left. Don't be stubborn. <gasps> That's Kevin's. All right, here we go. That is art. Dale, that is beautiful. Toasting chocolates. Ah. From the historic southern end of McIntosh County up to the tranquil beauty of Shellman Bluff, a charming riverside community with its own character and friendly locals who genuinely loved their little gem of a town. People come in for the weekend, uh, some of them for the long weekend, mainly to fish and play golf. We have a lot of people that have moved down here from Atlanta and California. They come down to visit and a lot of times they don't want to go back. Whether it's a launching spot for your latest fishing adventure at Fisherman's Bluff or you just want to grab a bite at the one-of-a-kind Hunter's Cafe, you have options. It is a golf cart community. And even in the evening, people drive down on the golf cart, have dinner at Hunter's. They will congregate in places and socialize. There's also a uh, particular holiday connected to the Irish. Shelman Bluff St. Patrick's Day. Friends of Shelman Bluff sponsors it. We raise money for the fire departments. We have activities for the kids. We have uh, food vendors. We just have a lot going on. And, and it's usually a two to three day weekend. Home base for our northern adventures in McIntosh County is the Blue Heron Inn, a waterside B&B that overlooks the golden marshes of McIntosh. Beautiful bedroom options, everyone being a room with a view, and this B&B is also known for bird watching. And just down the road, we hit our next excursion challenge, and it's a good one, folks. Welcome to the Sapelo Hammock Golf Club run by locals, loved by the locals, and welcome to everyone. A lot of people call us a diamond in the rough. We're sitting here in a prime location right on the waterfront. About half our holes were actually uh, included with the marsh. Temple Hammock Golf Club is a little different than most. It is a community coming together. The owners really take ownership of the golf course and they take a lot of pride in it and they do a lot of volunteering and it's a neat situation. Not only is it a fabulous place to play golf, but it's also a gathering spot. My favorite thing about Sapelo Hammock, it is the wildlife. And um, one of the first 
animals I ran across was a red fox. I would throw her peanut butter crackers. And then I started hearing stories from the golfers telling me that there was a fox that was stealing their golf balls. Surprisingly, there are many videos online of golf ball stealing foxes. One of the things that makes it so uh, beautiful and interesting when you play is all the wildlife that you do encounter out here. But the fox is probably number one. He's kind of the star of the place and uh, he will take your golf ball. While most visitors come here to relax and enjoy a special, well-manicured and well-run golf course, I always seem to put a little extra pressure on myself, but that, of course, is part of the show. So let's get started. Tell me about 17 here. Why is this a special hole? 17 is unique because it's a truly island green. Um, you're hitting over marsh, and there's marsh to the right, and marsh to the left, and marsh behind you. you got to hit a good shot to hit the green. This show comes with challenges. How many shots do I get to try to green this thing? Oh, I'll say you should be able to hit it in two shots. Two shots, yeah. all right. Should I island it or green it? Well. Because I see the island, but I also see the green's a little smaller. Yeah, I'd say two shots you'll get it on dry ground. All right, I like <laughs> this. So you had to change that a yeah. little. Yeah, <laughs> we won't make it a green, just a dry ground. That's right, that's <laughs> right. I like this guy. On the green. <laughs> He greened it. He greened it. Way to go, buddy. Slice. Uh, it's nice. Might be on dry ground, though. We'll see. Thank you. Thank you. When we return, it's reward time back on the Darien waterfront. Welcome to the Sapelo Hammock Golf Club. A perfectly designed course that captures the essence of coastal Georgia. Live oak trees draped with Spanish moss shade the fairways. Seemingly endless marsh views paint a backdrop that changes with the tides. This golf course is like none other that you typically encounter. Our members and our owners, not only do they have a financial stake, but they have a personal stake in the outcome of the club as well. It's very refreshing to see a, a group of people that committed to the success of the club. It's our hometown course here in Shelman Bluff, Georgia, but it's open to all. So come on by and play one of the most scenic courses in the South. From the historic back rivers and squares of southern McIntosh County to its peaceful and unique northern side, you'll never go hungry again in this part of Georgia. So after success on the river in the Sugar Marsh Cottage Kitchen and even reaching the greens of Sapelo Hammock, it's reward time in Darien. And this waterfront wine shop has a secret. It's a wine and beer shop in the front with a party in the back. And it's also where you'll find the man known as Waterfront Mike. It definitely is the uh, the cheers of the South yeah. uh, kind of thing, but um, there's something about this little town that's charming, and to me, I think it's the layers of history that are here. Absolutely. And it brings people from all over the world here. When we got down here in 2006, we were the only business on this street operating with the exception of the hardware store. So now we got our coffee shop, we got our, we got our wine bar, Mexican we got restaurants, restaurants, Mexican restaurants, skippers, 
there. Right, Skipper's was there, so. <laughs> when you come into the store, here you have the shop. I see meats, I see wine, I see beer, I see a variety of things. Talk about what you have in the shop, and then we'll get to the back, where the, the magic happens. The fun house. We've got steaks, ribeyes, and fillets in there, subprime steak. Cigars, we, all these little um, niches that uh, we have in here where you can't get them between Savannah and Jacksonville. Horse Creek Winery. You know, see it on the front there? Right. Have it here in front of us. Hang on. Mmm. Right. Is I that nice? It. I love it. It goes with the weather. Right. <laughs> They're our partners, and um, we like to support their wines. It's an incredible uh, venue, and it's also probably one of our best selling wines. Tourists that want to take a Georgia product back home, Georgia grown product. Yeah. And uh, we're on the Georgia grown trail here. But uh, Horse Creek Winery has been a great partnership. We want partners in the community with different businesses to sustain and, and help with the tourism. All right, Waterfront Mike. This is the start to a great reward. Cheers. This is what Waterfront Mike was talking about. This is how you end a Darien excursion. Russ, Jennifer, <laughs> thank you so much. All right, everybody, cheers. Yeah. Woo! From delicious shrimp and grits served by our home base host to fishing secret spots with a man who knows these Darien back rivers like the back of his hand to making chocolate with a legendary chocolatier and even playing a decent hole or two at a community-run golf course with the friendliest locals you'll find this side of the Altamaha River. This McIntosh County excursion has ended in festive fashion. And I may be here for a while with my friends on the waterfront. Excursion complete. See you next time.